So, summarising what we've learnt today. Breathing. Breathe normally, not excessively in or out. Two, exhale the moment your face is back in the water in a steady breath through nose and mouth to equalise pressure. Breathe every two. This ensures you have enough oxygen in and you avoid CO2 buildup for you to be able to swim at a competitive pace. Breathing every three or four or five is fine if you're just cruising, but get used to practicing what you do in a race. Lastly, make sure the waterline is not on your eyes. Make sure it's the top of your head here. This helps bring your legs up at the back and ensures you don't swim like an anchor. Catch set up. Bear in mind you're using your lats. A high elbow promotes lat engagement. A round arm, straight arm or windmill stroke promotes lat engagement. The second you drop, you lose the engagement of the lats, one of the primary swimming muscles. Front crawl is not swam on your front, unless you're an Olympic champion. Move sideways and you immediately get the aquadynamic benefits and you release the arm to come over the top and use the correct muscle for swimming. It's also very hard when you're sideways on to come across your body. If you don't believe it, try it. Being on your side promotes the correct arm entry in front of you here. Yeah. Be a splashy swimmer. Don't be one of these swimmers that comes in and places their hands in the water and then reaches up. Let the arm come over and land with its weight in the water. It will go deeper and be ready for the set position. Wider and deeper. Plenty of splash. The arm is completely loose. You don't lead the pull by your arm here by pulling and then turning. If I start the pull here and then turn my body, you'll notice it's already come across, which means you'll swim sideways and you'll slip the water. After the setup of the catch, move your hip first, present vertical forearm using the whole fingertip to elbow and then push. Crossing. We've already spoken about the fact that swinging across disengages the lats. You can also see that as you swing across, this promotes landing in front of the center line here. So what you do is present a barrier to forward progress by this large lump of arm here. It also promotes you starting your pull from the wrong side of your body, so that when you rotate, it's not unusual to see crosses not only starting the pull on their opposite shoulder, but finishing on their opposite hip. You'll usually, but not always, find that a cross also means the elbow lands first. And even when it doesn't, a crossing stroke tends to land first and then reach forward, with the result, as you can see, the fingers are above the water and presenting an effective break to forward progress. Coming in and landing underneath your body enables shoulder over elbow over arm. What we also see when people are crossing very often is that people tend to come round and enter thumb first which is one of the biggest causes of shoulder injuries in swimmers and if you start to pull from this position you're already not sending water backwards you're slipping water from the ideal position here to here and you can see there's no way I can push water back with my hand in this position. A unit turn so important. Lead with your hips. So when you're in the water, your face is returned to air. You don't start the pull when you're still on this side because this just promotes an ineffective push. You can see it's crossing. What you would do is you would return to air, face in, hips rotate out of the way, and then with this side upwards, the hip cleared out, you can present a clear, unencumbered path straight out the back to push your stroke. So again, you move from this to this. Leave the arm out in front, hip rotate, turn and push. Super important. You need to imagine the fact that you are not coming across and pulling water back. You are actually entering the water 
and moving over a stationary hand and pushing away. We'll talk about the two key elements on the propulsion phase. One is the acceleration. You see so many swimmers just coming through at that pace. You're not going to proceed through the water that way. Secondly is the replaning of the hand at the back. Many coaches don't advocate this, but for endurance swimming, why wouldn't you get free distance per stroke? What people tend to do, and it's a natural reaction, is to use their front arm to counterbalance their rotation, especially if you commence the pull at the front. So what we see is people coming over, the arm coming out to balance. It's out here, so even if the pull is effective, it's still wide. But what happens is as they come back in again, this left arm crosses, this has finished its stroke here and this hasn't started. Dead spot here, dead spot here. What we are looking for is rotate to air, come across, semi catch up or full catch up, some of you may know it as, hip rotation, clear the hip out of the way and push back strongly, accelerating with that replane at the back. You do that very naturally on your non-breathing side what we're about here is getting the timing right. As you get better, the timing between this movement will probably happen quicker. The end game of this is to, as you feel yourself starting to slow, take your next stroke. Rotate, rotate, rotate. It is never this. Start the pull, rotate. You must start with the hip first, then the arm. It's never arm start and then the hip. Thank you for listening. We hope that some water work enables you to understand the mechanics of an effective swim properly. Once you've got the technique, and many of our athletes will practice for 10 or 15 minutes every session on pure technique, you'll find that applying your natural cadence or over the water stroke rate gets you past that plateau that you're currently stuck at. Have any feedback in the comments below? Thanks for listening.